Hello and welcome to another Avid tutorial. This one is going to be on user profiles and specifically how to create a user profile and in terms of our SMU setup, how to import the SMU film user settings so that you'll have the same keyboard shortcuts and sort of default settings that we've been talking about in class and that we want everyone to start with and then you can customize things yourself from there. But this way you all start at the same place. So um, if I'm in Avid here, to see my user profiles and what's available, I can bring up the settings menu and the shortcut for that is command comma. I'll hit that and this will bring up my settings. And you can see there's several tabs here and I'm not gonna go through all those here. There's a separate uh, tutorial on settings and customization that will go through a lot of this. But I wanna click on this user tab and right up at the top, you can see user profile and you can see uh, who I'm loaded as. If I click this drop box, I could see other users on this computer. In this case, I'm the only one here. And so one option, if I want to make my own user, would be create user profile. And I could do this and give it a name. Okay, and now I have that user available as well. And I could start tweaking any of my user settings here. And if you look through this, you can see all of these things in this list are things that are tied to your user. So it doesn't matter what project you're in or what computer you're on. If you have that user loaded up, all of those settings are going to be the same. And one of the key ones here, again, I'm not going to get into the details on this, is your keyboard settings, where you can see what all the key shortcuts do. Now, a lot of these, um, the way we have our system set up at SMU, are very similar to the default. So if you just work with this, a lot of those settings will be the same, but some of them will be a little different. We've tweaked some to kind of work with the um, way that we teach editing and commands that are going to be most useful as you're sort of getting started out working as an editor. And then as you get more advanced and you find things that you want to use yourself, you can uh, tweak those and make your own changes. So we could go through and remap everything on here and any of the other user settings that we want to change. But what's going to be easier is just to bring in an existing user profile that already has the right settings. So I'm going to close out of here for a second. And I had you download, and this should be available um, on Canvas. You can find the link to this. This SMU Film zip file. This is our standard SMU Film user settings. And if I open this up, you can see there's a folder inside it. And it's actually this whole folder is the user profile, just like an Avid project where the user profile is not a single file, but it's a folder with several files inside it. And the um, thing I want you to note here is there's kind of several things. Um, this MC State media tool. Um, and this user files um, folder that are going to be part of every user profile. And then there's two files that actually have the same sort of name, SMU film. One of them is called settings.xml and one of them is just called smufilm.av. Okay, so this is my user profile. So one thing I could do is just import this directly into Avid and then I'd have this user profile SMU film. And you're welcome to do that if you would like to do so. However, if you'd like to kind of have it as your own user profile and be able to start tweaking it separately, and maybe you, you could even bring in the SMU film profile and your own personal profile, and then if something on your personal profile isn't you know matching up, you could go back to the original SMU film one and see what was done there. Um, so I want to actually make a version of this that has uh, my own username on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this. Now I have a copy of that user profile, so I still have this original one if I want to get back to it. And the all you have to do here to change the name is just change the file names, but I got to be careful. Remember, Avid is pretty specific about how files are named and finding things in the right places and stuff like that. So I just got to make sure that I'm consistent with my naming. So I'll call this Mark 2 Profile. Okay, and so now that that's the name of the folder, I want to make sure these two files match that name exactly. I'm going to go here and make sure that I'm using the same spacing and capitalization. And I want to leave a single space after the name of the profile before this word settings and leave the settings uh, word there in the XML file. And down here, I'm going to do the same thing, mark to space profile. And you can see what I've done is I've made sure that on these three places, the folder name that this is all in, this file that has the name space settings.xml, and this file that has the name.ave, 
that this name part is exactly the same in all those. And that way, Avid will read this correctly. It knows these are all part of the same user profile. OK, so now I've got that set. I'm going to go back into Avid, bring up my settings, again, Command, Comma. And I'm going to say, instead of Create Profile, I'm going to say Import a User Profile. And it's going to ask me, OK, where is your user profile? And we'll just put that here. I'll open it, and now I have this profile loaded up. And if I go into my keyboard settings here, um, these ones now actually match the SMU film profile. I don't know if you notice any of the differences, but I just looked at a couple of things where I know that there's some things we changed. So for instance, the semicolon being the link selection toggle, um, and N being make subclip, and H being make an M edit. So that's in here now. Now, when I imported this, I left the profile on my desktop, which isn't really where I want this to live. But that's OK, because what it's actually reading now is not this. It's going to create its own version of this profile in the Avid Users folder. So on a Mac, this is at Macintosh HD, User, Shared, Avid Media Composer, Avid Users. That's where you can find this. And you can see all this here. I um, actually loaded this inside the mkarens profile, because that's where I was logged in as to start with. But you can see inside here, here's that Mark II profile. It's got all these. Here's also this other set of Avid settings that I just created and hadn't customized at all yet. And so now I've got this copied inside the Avid Users folder. So even if I get rid of this, the one on my desktop, Avid will still work fine. All the information is still in here because it's made a copy of it into its own spot. If you are looking for your Avid user profiles, so for instance, if you had a user profile on one computer and you wanted to copy it to another computer, um, this is where you're going to find it. So again, here's the file path down here that you can see. And you can grab your user profile here and copy it to a flash drive or something, bring it to another computer, import it in from there, and you're ready to go with your settings. That's actually something that's mentioned in one of our editing class readings where it talks about that's something as a professional editor, if you're working in Avid, you just kind of always have a drive with your settings on it. So if you end up on a different system, you throw in the flash drive, grab your user settings, and everything is working the way you expected with your keyboard shortcuts and your window layouts and everything like that. So that's how we get our user profile in here and have one that is set up with your name and you can start customizing with your specific settings. And again, we'll uh, talk about that in a separate tutorial, but hope that was helpful and you can follow through it.